So this charming wee pink fella here is Google's fresh new Chromecast 2020 media streamer. Shove it into a spare hole in your telly and you'll be able to stream gorgeous looking movies and TV shows from all of your favourite online services in full 4K HDR glory where supported. And all with a fresh new Google TV interface which I'm very interested to try out. You can grab the 2020 Chromecast direct from Google right now for just 60 quid and if you're tempted to snatch one of your own well I'm going to run you through the full setup process, take you on a tour of that Google TV interface and give you my initial review. And for more on the latest greatest tech please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up as always let's see what you actually get bundled in the box. So first up in this box must be the actual Chromecast and it's looking nice and dinky as usual. So first up yes as usual lovely compact design and very very skinny indeed you should have no problem hiding this away behind your telly even if you don't have much room back there. And that's kind of a shame because I actually really like the uh, the cute salmon pink finish something very different. This right here is the Sunrise model, but you can also grab it in Sky, which is blue, or Snow, which is unsurprisingly white. And in that box, you also get a remote control. This is just as dinky as the actual Chromecast itself, and incredibly light as well, because it doesn't actually have any batteries in it just yet. And in there, you also get a quick start guide. You've got your three pin plug and a USB cable for actually powering the Chromecast. And thankfully, a pair of AAA batteries for the remote control as well, which are also pink, just like the Chromecast. Now that is some proper attention to detail. So Basically everything you'll need is right there in the box. Now setup is thankfully very straightforward. The Chromecast itself needs power so just connect that up to the power cable and then bung the other end in a spare socket. And all being well this little LED light on the back of the Chromecast will start to flash. And now comes the tricky part if you've got a wall mounted TV like me you've got to actually plug the Chromecast into a spare HDMI port. And once you've actually managed to get the Chromecast plugged in just turn on your TV, browse to that HDMI source and then follow the instructions. So hold down these two buttons on the remote and as you can see it gives you an instruction to download the Google Home app. You can find this easily enough on the Google Play Store and also on Apple's App Store. And once you've opened that up and got all logged in with your Google creds you should hopefully see a setup Chromecast option right up here near the top. If you don't see that then just tap this plus icon instead and go to setup device. And then once you've clicked on setup Chromecast you'll then need to grant Google Home camera permission so you can actually scan that QR code. But you can grant it permission only this time if you like. And now uh, hopefully this will work. Connecting to Chromecast. So first up the Chromecast 2020 remote control and despite the fact that it is pink I've already managed to somehow misplace it several times in the space of just a few bloody hours. And yes I realise that probably says more about the state of my mind, basically warm mush, than it does about the remote control but honestly it is very very dinky indeed so if you're the kind of person who loses remote controls prepare to misplace this a lot. I swear it's like a frigging chameleon it just blends in. You've got infrared for controlling your TV so you can power it on or off, you can tweak the volume and you can mute it independently of the Chromecast. And that'll work for me absolutely perfectly, the only thing that didn't work was the dinky little source button down below. You've also got built in Bluetooth on this thing for actually communicating with the Chromecast which is really handy means you don't need line of sight or anything and you've also got a built in accelerometer there too in case you want to download and play any games on your Chromecast. The remote control also finds room for Netflix and YouTube shortcut buttons and these work exactly as expected although sadly they can't be customised and swapped to different apps. And of course the big deal with the Chromecast and its remote control is the fact that you've got the Google Assistant built in there, more on this in a bit. Let's take a look at the Google TV experience which is basically an evolution of the standard Android TV used by the Nvidia Shield streamer and lots of smart TVs. Android TV is running underneath here basically so you'll still have support for well over 6,000 apps which can be downloaded directly via the Chromecast. As well as media streaming shenanigans, you've got news, you've got sports, you've got kids stuff, games, whatever you need basically. However, bear in mind that you don't have a huge amount of storage here on the Chromecast 2020. The system was shown around 4.4 gigabytes of total space of which 1.1 gigs was already used up by the handful of media apps that were pre-installed. Now Google TV is basically designed to make it as simple as possible to find something good to watch even when you're using multiple streaming services and apps. The top picks for you tab right at the top recommends content based on what you've watched before and this is definitely handy if you need some inspiration. I also like how the Rotten Tomatoes score is shown right there too so you know if you've been fed a load of hot garbage. Alternatively for further recommendations you can just press and hold that Google Assistant button and ask via the remote control what should I watch. It's a bit of a lucky dip I prefer to ask for more specific things like a particular genre or movie director or something like that. So for instance show me horror movies from the 1980s. Not bad, not bad, got a few classics in there, definitely liking these recommendations. 
Now you could also ask for movies starring your favourite actor or by your favourite director. And this worked pretty good on the whole, although the Google Chromecast for some reason thinks that Ben Wheatley directed the IT crowd. And you can also ask for one of your favourite flicks of all time and then the Google Chromecast will tell you exactly what services it's available on, how much it will cost to rent, to buy, all that good stuff. If you scroll down a one row from the recommendations you've got a list of all of your downloaded apps, although unfortunately you don't seem to be able to rearrange these and they don't seem to rearrange automatically based on how much you actually use them which is kind of annoying. And then if you keep on scrolling it's basically a Netflix style pit of random genres and other gumph. Now weirdly some of the visuals in the menus did look a little bit low res when I was scrolling through the Google TV UI but hopefully that's just something that will get fixed in an update or maybe it's just my eyes finally conking out. But basically everything worked as expected and wasn't very different from the Android TV general experience. You can stream up to 4K resolution video on the Chromecast 2020 at up to 60 frames per second. You've got full support for HDR10 Plus content as well as Dolby Vision. Now, unfortunately there's no upscaling option on here unlike the Nvidia Shield TV which isn't too surprising given the cheaper cost of the Chromecast. Although Google said that it was something that they were looking at. And you've also got full support for Dolby Atmos beyond 5.1. And of course, as well as controlling all of your TV shenanigans, the Google Assistant can also be called upon to tweak and fiddle with all of your smart home devices as well. So for instance, turn off studio lights. Turning off four lights. And off they go. And of course, because it's a Chromecast, you can also, unsurprisingly, cast your phone content straight to the Chromecast to share your photos, videos, whatever you want. The only really interesting omission from the Google Chromecast 2020 is there's no Stadia support at all whatsoever. Definitely quite an intriguing one. Uh, so yeah, if you want to get a bit of Stadia gaming on the go, you will have to upgrade to the Chromecast Ultra. So right, there's a quick tour of the Google Chromecast 2020 and that Google TV UI and my initial impressions. Definitely not exactly a massive jump over Android TV, but the fact that you've got that Google Assistant support built into the remote control and it can search across all of your streaming services all in a jiffy definitely makes it a worthwhile choice, especially if you've only got 60 quid to spare. But it'd be great to hear your own thoughts down in the comments below. And are you gutted that there's no Stadia support in there? I'm willing to bet there's probably not too many people crying into their pillows right now. And for more of the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers.